Flavor family, what is up? It is Bobby and my homie Art coming at you live on a Wednesday night in sweet home Chicago, sweet hot, sweltering Chicago. But you know what? That doesn't stop us. Art and I have had a busy day of filming grocery reviews and all that good stuff. We came home, we're like, yo, let's pop onto a live stream, hang out with our Flavor City family and have a good old time. So before we get into the nitty gritty of what's going on, two things. Number one, can you hear me? right? Does the picture look good? And number two, leave a comment down below. Let us know where you're watching from. We want to hear all the far regions in the world, Philippines, Australia, New Zealand, and more importantly, there's been an upgrade in the Flav City Productions kitchen. Art can now talk into the microphone and you can hear him. Can they hear me? That's <laughs> the question. Can you hear Art, aka <laughs> me? I don't talk about myself in third person. <laughs> Other than special occasions like right now, so. All right, give so. Give a uh, thumbs up if you can hear Art. Yeah, thumbs up if you can hear Art. This is great because Art has all this pithy commentary. There's lots of crazy stuff going in Art's head, and I feel like if you don't hear that, yeah, miss out, right? We got France. Guiana is in the house. We hear Art too. Holla at a player when nice. you see him in the street. High five, everyone. Oh, Sydney, Australia. Sydney, Australia, amazing city. Was there in, um, what was it? Three months ago, fantastic. Most beautiful harbor in the world. Uh, we did a meetup in uh, Sydney, and we did a meetup in, um, what's the other city, uh, Melbourne, and it was fantastic. So we got a bunch of people here, 230 people hanging out on a Wednesday night, and Israel's in the house. Wow, how cool is this, right? How cool is the interweb, right? We all press the old play button. Next thing you know, we got people from all over the world. Ooh-wee, right? That's fun, you guys. Also fun is this. We're gonna make two recipes from the new cookbook, Keto Meal Prep by Flav City. You guys have been blowing this thing up on, on uh, Amazon, and I thank you, and I love you for that. Over 410 five-star reviews, mad, mad love. Um, so many good sales. We didn't quite make it to a number one bestseller yet, but there's still time. The Amazon link down is below. Even if you're not on keto, even if you're not low carb, if you're looking to lose weight and feel good without, without sacrificing flavor, this is your book. Because what does it say right there, Art? Read that to me. 125 low carb recipes that actually taste good. That's right, okay? And Art actually took this photo on the cover. There's too many health food recipes out there, low carb, weight loss, Whole30, whatever, that have no flavor. No one wants to diet and feel like they're sacrificing. When you buy this book for $22.50, you get 125 recipes. Each one has a photo, which is great. Each one has detailed macros and tips, and it tells you if there's a video on YouTube. I mean, look at this. This is the food you can eat, salmon burgers with uh, secret sauce, when you're on keto. Many of them are paleo, many are Whole30. It's because you guys asked for a cookbook. I wanted to give you the best one we can possibly do. So thank you to everyone who supported the book. I'll put the link down below in the description box. Hey, tell a friend about it. Tell a neighbor. Anyone looking to lose weight and feel great, this is your cookbook guide to doing so. Simone R Miranda asks, where do you find your interesting shirts at? And the one you're wearing right now. Yes. This one. This is, is a, a Flav City one. original. Um, you can click on the, there's usually below the video, like some products. We have this and the mugs, but I normally get them from Bad Pickle t-shirts. So badpickletea.com. That's where I get all my uh, stuff from. Cynthia, because of you, Bobby, my family is eating cleaner and has even lost a few of the winter pounds we got back in 2015. That's what I love to hear. When families lose weight, when spouses lose weight, these recipes are kid approved. How many moms or dads have said, man, you, my kids love your recipes. They don't even know they're eating cauliflower rice pilaf or cauliflower tater tots or low carb this. They don't know, you know why? They don't care because it tastes good, baby. All right, here's what we're cooking tonight. We're doing a combination of two recipes in the cookbook. See, there are 125 recipes you can flip and switch. So here's number one, Arturo. We're making this chicken. This is my crispiest chicken thigh recipe ever, painted with Alabama white barbecue chicken. Little spice crust, insanely hot cast iron pan, hot oven, tangy, creamy, dairy-free barbecue sauce. We're gonna serve that Arturion with my creamy, pretty much dairy-free cream spinach with mushrooms and bacon. In the book, this is served with fennel spice chicken breast bathed in butter and garlic, but hey, I can do whatever I want. You know why? 
I'm the boss of me, ain't no one gonna tell me what to do. So let's get started, my friends. Keep leaving comments down below. Let us know where you're watching from, and maybe more importantly, Art, right, what should they do with the link right above my head they right now? They should share the heck out of it. And how should they do that? Uh, on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, right. That's right, Twitter. Twitter, anywhere you want. You say, yo, Tinder. my <laughs> Tinder, if you wanna, like, hey, I know this guy named Flav City, he's gonna hook you up. Hey, you say Flav City and Art, are cooking up a keto storm on YouTube. If you're gonna miss out, you're gonna feel like you yeah, really missed out, okay? Wait, hold this for a second for extreme close up on yes. your end. I just need to take the heads um, So that's what we're gonna do. And um, I got the oven preheating at 475. I started the uh, bacon back there in the pan because uh, it was about eight to 10 minutes to crisp up the bacon. I feel like you guys didn't have to wait that long. And it got that nice aroma of uh, bacon in the kitchen and I really like that. Hang on, I just want to hear myself talk as a test so I can hear myself talk. Oh, yeah, that comes out okay. Okay, okay I'm happy. New technology, trying it out. Hey. Somebody said it sounds like I have a cold. I don't. I Art think, it's just, I think Art, it's just the audio. We don't call Art the Finnish horse for no reason. He doesn't get sick. Yeah, what is that right? <laughs> right? Because you're strong and healthy as a horse. That's okay, why. That's right. Okay? Art has Finnish heritage. He may be fair skinned like me and burn very easily, but he doesn't get sick. Less talking, more cooking. Let's do it, family. So Finish back here. Finnish citizen, by the way, not just heritage. <laughs> That's right, Finnish citizen too, but he was born here. Yes, right. Five, organic, super high quality, bone on, skin on, chicken thighs. Trivia number one for the night. I stored these in the fridge for about four hours before cooking these. Can someone tell me why I did that open, exposed, out of the package? Someone tell me why, and then I'm gonna make a spice rub. This recipe is like so simple, but it really consists of a hot cast iron pan, which I'm gonna start preheating now, and a hot oven, and the most crackling, crispy skin next to deep frying, right? Obviously deep frying is the bomb. This gets right up there and it's way healthier. It's delicious. Yeah, I'm gonna emphasize something Mickey just said. The yep. milk and food is for all, not only those in keto. I am not following the keto diet, but well said. I like every single thing I've eaten here when we've been doing keto. Demos. Thank you, Art. Thank you. And y'all got it right, right? Daisy got it. Adriana got it. Jason, dry out the skin, right? Moisture. Water is the enemy to making crispy skin. So if I had wet, floppy skin from the package, how's it going to stay nice crispy in the pan? It's not. It's going to get wet and boil. So what I want to do is just make a quick little spice rub. In the book, it calls for smoked paprika and cayenne pepper. Uh, because our sweet little baby Rose is breastfeeding, I want to lay off of spicy foods because I don't want her to be getting like a spice attack because she got it last week. I made spicy ground beef tacos and spicy uh, wings two nights in a row, and she was gassy and colicky like nobody's beeswax. So I'm going to make a light spice rub here. Check it out, Art. A little paprika and a little bit of uh, turmeric. What kind of paprika am I using, Art? I'm going to guess smoked. You're right. Because if you put your nose in there, um, Shanna or Kim, yes, you'd smell that smoky flavor. And what's really interesting, smoked paprika and turmeric, best friends. Because turmeric is a little smoky and peppery. This is smoky and peppery. Match made in heaven. Yeah, to Sandra and to everyone who said more volume on art, this is as good as we can do. I'm going to be a little softer than Bobby just due to different mics. But hey, at least I am mic this time. That's right. Art's doing the library voice. I don't have a library voice, okay? So I'm gonna do a light spice rub here, but once again, I'm holding off on the salting because I don't want it to leach water out of the skin until right before it goes in the pan. So ideally, I would let this sit for 20 minutes, but what I did, y'all, is I pulled this from the fridge 20 minutes ago because why don't I put cold chicken into a hot pan? What happens when I do that? Bad things happen. Bad things mess you up. You don't wanna, you don't wanna see what happens. So I'm just don't gonna do that. <laughs> I'm just gonna rub that around and put it there and wash my paws. And Art, tell me what some people are saying. Uh, no. Some people are giving a thumbs up with jazz hands, so that's always good. Nice. Uh, Kim Seal says that it cools down the pan, which is true. It cooks unevenly. Yep. Luann Pachowski, sorry, I pronounced Pachkowski. Uh, the best ever. That's uh, absolutely, uneven cooking. Yes. So all those things, right? Cold meat, crispy. What did Christy do? Oh, oh no, no, they, crispy, crispy. Yes, crispy. Not, not the great crispy 11B on no. Instagram. No. Yeah. Hot pan, cold chicken. Temperature goes down. We don't get uh, nice crispy skin. Also, 
it's gonna lower the temperature, so uh, it's gonna end up boiling in its own juices. Hot pan, warm chicken, or you know, room temperature chicken, you can leave this chicken out for an hour. Ain't nothing gonna happen. The food police ain't gonna come here and say, yo, your chicken's got microbes on there and salmonella. If anything happened to grow in an hour, my jet engine cast iron pan would ghost bust that like nobody's business, okay? Now, Art, check out what's in this pan. What you got? I got some bacon and I got some cremini mushrooms. That's I always good. cooked that down before we started because it takes a little bit of time and it's not that exciting. That's the base, Art, for our cream spinach. Now, I'm gonna pop that back over the heat. So I love this recipe because it's a, clay, a take on classic cream spinach, but it's essentially dairy-free and nobody ever knows. They're not like, wait, you use coconut milk? I can't taste that. First planks, then sticks, fingers back the whole time, and we get a nice dice on the red onion. We only use about half a red onion because they are slightly higher in carbs, um, so I don't want to use too much of it. But I gave everything else a head start because I was trying to caramelize the mushrooms, and I can't do that when there's a bunch of water in the pan from the onions and I held off on the salt too. So now that the mushrooms and the bacon is all happy back here, I can add my onions and I can add some salt. Patricia, this is a shoe knife. That's the choice of Bobby. That's right. It's Japanese, it's great. So S-H-U-N, shun. That's right. I have two kinds of knives in the kitchen. I have expensive knives. Well, keep in mind, the kitchen is my playground, so I like expensive toys here. I don't care about it, fancy cars and stuff like that. So I have two kinds of knives, Patricia. I have, this is like a, this is expensive. This one's about a $250 knife, but I also have a couple other ones. This is like a $200 knife from Shun. This is called the Hikari. It's a Japanese hornet's nest uh, pattern there. Really, really nice. But then I always tell people, I give an option on Amazon for like, uh, it's literally an $8 knife. It's not quite this one. It's called Equinox. Um, I will give you the link if you want it. It's, I mean, not quite as good, but it's really good. The most important thing is you have two knives in the kitchen. You have a paring knife and a chef's knife. You'll do 95% of the work with these two. A sharp knife is a good knife. You don't have to get a whole set and stuff like that. Just get two decent knives. Okay. Does anybody else out there remember Tenacious D singing a song called Hornet's Nest on Saturday Night Live on the Weekend Update one time? I just started laughing as soon as you said Hornet's I, Nest, and I figured nobody else is going to know I, what I, talking about if I started You know singing. what? Well, it is YouTube, so there might be one person, but... Worth, so, going, worth walking over there or stay here? Stay over there. I'm right. not, nothing too exciting is happening here. Um, so, let's think where we're at. We got our chicken marinating, our cream spinach going. Um, we have to start preheating our cast iron pan to get our chicken in. So what I'm gonna do is actually swap burners here. A dull knife is a dangerous knife. That it is. Very true. I Just would say 80% of home cooks kitchens that I walk into have dull knives. And why is that dangerous? Because a dull knife means you put more pressure down here. More pressure means you're more likely to slice off the old finger with a little accent there. The next thing you know, you're called four finger McGee. No one wants to be called that all because you didn't follow Bobby's advice and get a nice knife or even an $8 knife that was sharp, okay? Every, I don't know, three to four months, go to the local sharpening place, have it sharpened. I don't do that with this one. I send it to the factory in Washington because I don't trust the guys to uh, sharpen the Japanese steel. They do it for me, it's like $5. You're saying Oregon? Uh, oh yeah, Oregon, thank you. To a lot, if I remember. Oh my God, how do you know that? I'm good. Art is really good. He knows so much about so little, and then so little about so much. Okay. Thank you. For That's actually very accurate. I just came up with that. Because Art hasn't seen so many like popular movies, TV shows, but he knows so much about so many things no one else knows about. It's crazy. Valjean <clears throat> from Italy is on the horn here. Oh, Italia's and, in the house? Uh, Laura from New Zealand. So. Oh, sweet New Zealand. Very cool. All got around some, the world. Got some great all around the world people. Statues crumble for me. New Zealand. Grass-fed uh, lamb, grass-fed beef, grass-fed cheese. So let me tell you where Art and I did today. Super busy day. We went to Costco. We did a summer haul video there. All the things you want to buy and avoid for summertime. Drinks, um, desserts, beef, uh, hydration, stuff like that. Then we went to the other store, Mariano's, and we did a cheese review. We told you all the kind of cheeses at the grocery store you want to buy, avoid, what to look for, and what the difference is between goat, cow, sheep, 
um, even dairy-free cheeses, cream cheese, everything. It's going to be an epic video coming out Sunday, Costco Saturday. We're rolling, babe. You can't stop Art and I. There's no stopping us now. This is epically helpful. Tell Ken me. Seal tells us the phonetic pronunciation Tualatin, Oregon. Oh, dude, Kim. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kim. I appreciate it. That's pretty cool. That, so I okay. Somebody's gonna correct me. So we're cooking our chicken at pretty high temperatures. You tell me, are I using avocado oil or am I using olive oil for this? So in case you missed us, we're making two recipes from the cookbook. We're gonna make the skin of this chicken look like this. You've never had crispy skin like this, right? It's gonna get earth shatteringly, chicharrone-like crispy. Then you paint it. That's not Sherwin-Williams paint. That's Bobby Williams. Uh, Southern Alabama hot barbecue sauce. Why is it white? There's a famous pit master back in the day who came up with a mayonnaise-based horseradish and vinegar barbecue sauce. So that is fantastic. And um, oh, look at the previous picture. Oh, someone's feeding me my lunch. Not cute, right? And we're pairing it with the dairy-free cream spinach that normally is served with the butter-basted uh, chicken. And normally in the cookbook, the keto beans are served with, or the uh, keto chicken is served with keto black beans. I don't recommend eating soy very often. These are low carb black soybeans with a bacon and spinach uh, dressing. Oh my God, it's so good, you guys. It's like Southern done proper. Is there like any other place I can put the raw chicken? I feel like it's in- Yes, I will move the raw chicken from your arm. Style here. <laughs> I will move that from you. Hey, what did y'all say about my trivia? Avocado oil, Kim says avo. Jason says olive oil for the higher heat. Jason, my man, I'm gonna pick on you. It's the reverse, right? Mad love to Jason, right? We all love Jason, but olive oil has a slightly lower temperature, 375 to 400 versus avocado oil, which can go up to 500 degrees, 450 for some brands. So I want that. Plus JJ, the olive oil has a flavor, a fruity flavor. I don't want that for my barbecue recipe, which is why I want the neutral flavored avocado oil. Hi, from Puerto Rico, como estas? Hey, Puerto Rico, yo quiero comer mufongo. Oh, mufongo, este plato de plantains y um, estos candamentos y cebolla y uh, legostina. Oh, I want to try mufongo so bad. Um, what else did I want to say? Um, time to season the chicken, right? So now we'll throw a little bit of this unrefined kosher salt, meaning it's not processed. You guys know I don't use processed salt. This is raw with 70 minerals in here. If you use kosher salt that's 100% white, that means it's been processed, bleached, and refined. Nutrition's been taken away and it's been chemically bleached. No bueno. All right, now the most important thing, Art, is to make sure that my oil's hot. And we talked about it last week, but Art, tell everyone the advantages and maybe disadvantages of using cast iron pan. Cast iron is not a good conductor of heat, but once you get it hot, it holds on to the heat pretty darn well. And so uh, well said. you want to sear something good, cast iron can be your friend. Just give it time. And uh, I've even seen some recipes suggest preheating it in the oven first yeah. and then putting it on the stove. Well, what the video oven. did we do that for? Uh, I think we did that for one of these steaks. The steak like video, yeah. steak a thon And a steak a thon That was a crazy day. But Art nailed it, right? It's a little slow. Like me in school back in the day, I say. But once it gets going, runaway locomotive, right? Nothing sears chicken meat and holds and retains its heat like cast iron. Whereas this guy, sure, it heats up quickly, but it's a little more uneven. And as soon as I turn the heat off, all the heat dissipates from the and pan. And tack on to that because Selena just asked, does cast iron pass on any nutrients? So you do get a little bit of iron in you your do. diet if you use cast iron. Yeah, so. that's a nice advantage to it. Just don't cook acidic oh, foods in it gosh. like tomatoes. Oh, do we have a spammer? There's a spammer. Oh, do that's too bad. Any moderators on if this? there's a moderator here, eject the spammers like nobody's business. And we got 600 people, really cool, but take this link right above my head for the, uh, for the live stream. Paste it to your Instagram wall, your Instagram story, uh, your Facebook wall. Tell people Bobby and Art are hanging out, making keto recipes from his cookbook, which by the way, the Amazon link is down below and you don't want to miss it. Okay, so Art, come over here now. I feel like my oil is hot because see what's happening here? The Dead Sea is parting. Here's the oil and I wait a second and all of a sudden there's a little parting there. And can you see the wisps of smoke art? 
Eh, they're there, trust me. But here's another test. You can take food out of the pan if it's not hot. So if I were to go like this and it wasn't sizzling, big deal, just take it out. But listen, that's what you want. So we're gonna put five chicken in here. Yes, you can use cast iron on an electric stove. Somebody just asked. Yes, indeed. I think the only one you can't use it on is maybe glass because it scratches, scratches it. it yeah. It might not work on induction. I don't think it'll. Yeah, maybe induction doesn't work. Once it's in the pan, push it down just for a second. And then let me wash my hands. Yeah, does get... anybody have an induction cooktop and can you use cast iron? I'm going to guess no, but I don't know that. Yeah, let us know. I don't have induction. I, I always recommend going on Amazon on my shop and getting a portable gas burner and using that for cast iron. That's what we use for our cooking videos. It's really easy. So okay. salt the other side. Somebody said yes, you can. You so can? Interesting. Cast iron does work. Right. But there is one where it doesn't work. It's got to be glass or something. So a little bit of salt. Now, old because this one's been around since the ages, right? We slap it down. This is really important because we're going to cook it eight minutes inside down. Then we transfer it to a 475 degree oven. Yes, piping hot, skin side down in the pan for, what is it? Five minutes. Then we flip it three minutes. It's super quick, but it happens really, really delicious and fast. And the oil splatters a lot. So if you don't have a splatter guard, clean up city here, clean up city in there. Not my kind of party, right? So save yourself a lot of work. Get $10 on Amazon. I have the link in most of my videos, or if you go to flavecity.com, no, go to amazon.com slash shop slash flavecity, and it's there. Okay, so everything's getting pretty cooked down here for my cream spinach. All right, come over here. This is two pounds of frozen cream spinach. Why do I use frozen? It's just much easier to work with. It's organic. The most important part is squeezing out all of that water because that'll sog down my cream spinach. The only bad part about this is that it's cold and I always freeze my hand off doing this. Like two pounds of fresh spinach at the market organic would be like $10. Two bags of this was like $4. And it's just easier to work with because we're making wilted soft cream spinach anyway. So, oh my God, my hand's cold. Let's go over here, Art. <laughs> oh my God, so cold. Thank you to everybody that confirmed that you can use uh, induction. And oh, some nice. people said they even got glass when they do it. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Because I, I could have swore there was one. There was one that just you couldn't use it with, but maybe you can use it with glass. But well, it just, oh. Leslie just said just need to be careful moving it. Oh, okay, glass. yeah. Well, that wouldn't work for me, Leslie, because I am not careful with anything, and uh, I would scratch it up like nobody's business. I'm gonna refresh this because mine kind of stopped there for a sec. Okay, there we go. So there's a surprising amount of water in this. I mean, have you ever cooked spinach? You like start off with a bunch this big and end up with that. It's all water, that's why. Oh, oh my God, <laughs> frostbite. I gotta thaw this out, it's like 92 degrees out and I'm freezing in here. Okay, so this is pretty good. Now I'm going to take my spinach here, add that here. Now here's where things get interesting. First I have to season that, right, Art? Because that's a big, bland pile of spinach, right? Oh, yeah. Zero flavor. So let's add a nice big pinch of unrefined kosher salt and some, some pepper. And then we'll talk about the cream, the dairy-free cream. It's something when I first came up with the recipe, I was a little nervous about, but when I tasted it, it was gold, okay? Yes, the, everything but the bagel seasoning is from Trader Joe, but then Costco has something similar as well. Yeah, Costco, Costco pretty much has the same, but it's a right huge now. thing. How'd that come up? Uh, I don't but I wouldn't get it because I use a very low quality smoked salmon. And that will be in another video that Art and I are gonna film soon called uh, 10 Things to Stay Away From, from Trader Joe's. I just don't know how we're gonna film Trader it. Joe? Trader Joe's, yeah. Oh, I thought it was on Costco. Oh, did I say Costco? Oh, uh, Trader Joe's, 10 Things to Stay Away From. I just don't know how we're gonna film it because you can't film in Trader Joe's anymore. A lot of people 
Everything is buffered. Are you having that problem? Yeah, I, I didn't have a problem. Mine kind of stopped when I refreshed the uh, stream. Okay. So you might have to refresh it. My we got, phone's going all right. Yeah, all right. We got Australia in the house. So check it out. Things are getting pretty good over here, Art. The thing is, don't disturb the chicken. Let the chicken do its thing. If you start poking and prodding now, the skin's going to break its sear, and you're going to ruin it. So let's come back over here and talk about the, the dairy-free part of this. It's like 99% dairy-free because optional, I do put a little bit of uh, Parmesan or Pecorino Romano in at the end. And here's the deal. This recipe actually is 100% paleo and Whole30. But because I put the, uh, the cheese in there, I didn't put the designation. So in the book, we always have these icons here. This recipe for the cream spinach with the chicken is a meal prep, nut-free and egg-free. And then it tells you right here, the macros per chicken breast, the macros per serving of spinach, we're talking about 1.31 grams of net carbs. But here's what's cool. If you find a recipe like this, I tell you the designation that this one's Whole30 and this one's Paleo. And it's so easy to take recipes that aren't and just get rid of like the Parmesan in this recipe and it will be. Same thing with the white uh, barbecue sauce. Everything is except the beans. So the chicken part with the sauce is keto, Paleo and Whole30 approved. So super, super good. And remember, every recipe has photos. This is creamy mushroom chicken and uh, broccoli cali mash. This is low carb cheesy pita breads with roasted, ca roasted chicken curry. This is chicken salt and boca with garlic and roasted mash. This one here is my favorite. You, you guys know by now, this is my favorite. Which one is that, Art? That is the Moroccan chicken. Yep. And we have a whole chapter of breakfast here. This is called Wakey Wakey Eggs and Bakey Sausage McMuffin Sandwich, Mini Meatball Scramble with Poached Eggs. Sausage and veggie frittata, Starbucks sous vide egg bites, Israeli or Middle Eastern shakshuka. So we have a ton of recipes that are going to hook you guys up in there. Do you want to answer two questions in one shot? Yes, do it to me. There were a question that said, uh, are these keto approved? And another person said, are there any gluten-free recipes? The entire cookbook is gluten-free and keto. Boom! You guys set me up perfectly for that one, right? That's right. There's not one drop of gluten or refined flowers in here at all. A drop There's, of gluten. Yeah, that's right. It ain't no gluten allowed in here. And they're all keto. And many of them are Whole30 and Paleo too. So, thank you very much. Let's see here. What's with these spammers, man? Go, I just time out go away. Um, so, what's gonna make this dairy free is the fact that I'm using coconut milk and coconut cream. And you might be like, oh, Bobby, that's a really kind of like bold, strong, sweet flavor. I think you're going to turn that cream spinach into a pina colada. The thing is, we have so many savory flavors in the pan. Mushrooms, onions, bacon, and spinach. You can't taste the coconut flavor. If you wanted to do an alternative, you can get dairy-free cream cheese and a little bit of this. This is uh, pea milk, half and half. Don't use the vanilla one. Use the unsweetened one. And you can use that as a dairy-free cream. It's unbelievable. So you have options, right? But trust me, unless you're allergic to coconut, I would not uh, avoid it. How unlikely, about that? Unlikely Critic just said, uh, gonna order the book tonight. Unlikely Critic, high five, right? The book's doing great, you guys, all because of you. 410 five-star reviews. We've sold thousands of copies. We didn't make it to the number one bestseller. Still waiting for Al Roker to call me to make keto recipes, but as long as you guys are enjoying it, that's all I care about. Okay, let's check the skin. I just want to make sure how long it goes on the second side for. <clears throat> it's going to go for, oh, 10 minutes in the oven now. All right, so check it out, Art. So we're going to take the pan. Do yourself a favor. Get a big oven mitt like this so you don't burn your wrist. I'm going to open my oven. Keep the splatter guard on like this. And then just to give you a peek. Oh, mama. Can you see that, Art? Oh, yeah. So it's getting super, super happy there. We keep it skin down, splatter guard on. 
make sure it's on tightly. Okay. Woo. They almost had a timer here. What if it starts buffering anytime we go over here? I don't know why. The router's right there. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking fine on my computer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So 10 minutes now, skin side down. Then three minutes, if we, we flip it, that skin is gonna be a chicharrone crispy AF. So good. So 10 minutes and then three. Um, I'm gonna let this cook through and warm here. And then we have to make the white barbecue sauce. So this is a really easy recipe. You can do it a lot quicker, but we're hanging out with family, right? We're having a good old time. And that's all that matters. So that's doing its thing. Let's start talking about the Alabama hot barbecue sauce, right? It's avocado oil mayonnaise. It's stone ground or Dijon mustard. It's lemon juice. It's apple cider or white vinegar. It's prepared horseradish. It's garlic. And it's, what else? Get my notes here and that's it, right? Super, super easy. Oh, I was supposed to put some garlic in the cream spinach. Emily Cares 03 with a super chat. What up, Emily Cares? Thank, Thank you, so you for that. that was, oh, Char. Char's here. I know Char. You can make Char a moderator. See Char? Yeah, Char's, Char's a long time fan. Yeah. Char, we're going to make you a moderator. When you uh, see a spammer like that, yeah, they're, they're you can get rid of them. Somebody asked if you're Italian. I am not Italian. I have lineage in Croatia, which is very close, uh, Lithuania, and Ukraine. So I forgot to put garlic in the cream spinach. So really quick, Art, let's just chop this up. If you want to be a moderator and kick these stupid spammers out of it, why were spammers on a cooking live stream? Who's going to leave a live stream to go to a porn website? That is so gross. What's the deal with people? Okay. Well, what's the deal? <laughs> so just take one clove and get it in here. Okay. Good. And just cook that up. Now, this is, once again, a white, sugar-free, dairy-free barbecue sauce that goes so well with the chicken because chicken is going to be really crispy and fatty and almost like greasy, but in a good way. This is super creamy and acidic and cuts through that richness like a hot knife through butter, right? Absolutely lovely. So, Jason Fromm says, even spammers like your cooking. <laughs> That's right. Even spammers are like... Yeah, hey, I like this food. Maybe it's all food porn. Maybe it's like screenshots. From That's right. Yeah, and... it's not porn. It's food porn. Bow chicka wow wow. Okay, let me scoop this out of the bottom of the barrel here. So every recipe in my cookbook says use avocado oil mayonnaise because if you watched my um, oil video or condiments video, you'll know that most mayonnaises are made with refined canola oil or refined soybean oil. Those oils are highly toxic, highly refined, and really, really bad for you for many reasons. Search Flav City cooking oils, you'll watch the video. So I only use avocado oil mayonnaise. And you can make your own. I just happen to be out right now. What's up? Good one, Andy P. Bobby should jar his own barbecue sauce and call it Bobby Q sauce. Dude, Andy, that is a great barbecue. Keto barbecue sauce. That's good. Well, we know I have the recipe. It's killer, right? Can you use powdered horseradish? Powdered? Yeah, powdered Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Fresh, powdered, don't matter to me. So then we'll take a little bit of, here's why I like this stone ground mustard. Look, Art. It has the yellow and the brown mustard seeds. So visually it looks cool and you get a little bit of crunch. And as Art says about crunch. If you're not on Team Crunch, you're not in our box. Exactly. Then for a little bit of heat, we take that prepared horseradish here. Could you use veganaise instead of the mayo? You can, yes. Um, there's certain veganaise that are better quality than other. So pick the one that has the least amount of like fillers, preservatives, and make sure it doesn't have carrageenan. Blah, we don't want that. Um, then we'll take a little bit of lemon juice here. You want this on the acidic side. So I'll check for seasoning in a little bit. And I see I did drop a seed in here. Thank you. Um, then we go in also with apple cider vinegar. Why? Because it's two kinds of, uh, of acid. We have the flavor of the lemon and the flavor of the ACV. I also want to grate a garlic clove in here too. So let's grab my microplaner. Shame you only have one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's a rich one. Hey, by the way, if you live in 
Chicagoland. Uh, Art doesn't even know this yet, but then <laughs> again, <laughs> right? um, we're doing another cookbook party and a cooking demo on August 3rd in Chicago. Um, tickets will be available soon. Every ticket gets a signed copy of the book. And there's a VIP ticket where I'm doing a cooking demo for about 30 people before the event starts. So look for that. Make sure to follow me on the Flav City Instagram stories. That's usually where I announce everything in addition to the community tab. It's gonna be really fun. Uh, could I do a mix of sour cream and mayo in this to lower the sodium count? Y uh, yes, you can, but why is there too much sodium in uh, mayonnaise, right? I see here 50 milligrams per tablespoon. So as long as you buy a low-ish uh, sodium mayonnaise, you're fine. But hey, you can do whatever you want, totally fine. Let me make sure I hit it all here. Mayonnaise, mustard, clove of garlic, prepared horseradish, white vinegar, or apple cider, lemon juice, salt, and pepper. Now, this is the most important part. We check for seasoning. I want it to be on the acidic side, like I said. So, I'll just check in here. Woo! That is delicious. I do want some more heat, though. Oh my God, you guys, that is awesome. From the horseradish, and it's donezo, right? Easiest, like no cook, no nothing barbecue sauce. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, Regirl 75, Amazon's the way to go if you want to get the book or if you're in Chicago, that uh, launch party that he mentioned. Yes, absolutely. So guys, once again, Amazon link down below. If you've already bought the book, which a lot of you have, thank you. Maybe you know someone else in your life who needs this book, who needs to lose weight, who needs to lower their diabetes, their blood pressure, uh, their heart disease. These are the kind of recipes that are going to make you feel better, lose weight, and do all of those things. Once again, Art, right, check it out. We put a lot of work into this book. That's why every single uh, recipe in this book has a photo. I don't understand books that don't have photos. I find that the strangest thing. Moroccan turkey kefta, golden turmeric sauce, roasted low carb root veggies. Every recipe also has detailed macros. Look at this, macros per serving of kefta, macros for the turmeric sauce, macros for the veggies. Each one gives you the dietary guideline. This one is a meal prep, nut-free, dairy-free, egg-free, and pila, uh, paleo. It tells you cooking time, tips, and if there's a YouTube video for each recipe. And there's not one recipe in here that's lame or easy in terms of like, oh, here's roasted sweet potatoes. Everything in here is super creative. and It won't even make you feel like you're dieting. That's the most important part because when you're losing weight or on a certain diet, you don't want to feel like you're sacrificing and you don't when you have this book. Amazon link down below. Sharing is caring. Let's get this book in the hands of as many people as possible, you guys. How much longer until you start selling autograph copies? Like oh, that? yeah, that's going to be, I'd probably say this month. So stay tuned. It's going to be very limited, maybe 50 copies. I'll post once again on Instagram and on uh, the community tab. Come back here, Art. Okay. Oh, hang on, spammer. <laughs> so the spinach is warmed through. The garlic is cooked. Now we take a whole can of coconut milk and we add that. Don't freak out, right? This is not going to turn into, uh, we put the lime in the coconut and eat it all up. It's not going to be like that. So now we add that. It starts to get a little more happy, right? But then we don't stop there, right, Art? No, we don't. We don't stop. We don't stop. Can't stop. We won't, won't stop. stop. <laughs> we take coconut cream. We take my favorite ever can opener. Look, one-handed, Mom. I could do it. Look, put it on. And then this could be the best thing ever. Or it's, the worst. Or, or the worst if it doesn't work, right? Right. Sometimes it doesn't work on big cans. But it's from Chefin. I have a, once again, if you go to my Amazon shop page, amazon.com slash shop slash Flav City, that's on there. I'm going to add maybe to start a third of that. If you didn't want to use coconuts because you're allergic, use dairy-free heavy cream, like uh, from peas or cashews, and one stick of dairy-free cream cheese. Uh, we talk about that actually in the review video. My favorite dairy-free cream cheese is from Kite Hill. It's almond-based, it's amazing. So a little spoiler alert for the cheese video coming this weekend. Always buy organic dairy. 
Organic dairy means the cows weren't fed uh, GMO corn and soy. It means they have access to the pasture at least four months of the year so they can eat grass. It has higher omega-3s, lower omega-6s, the bad ones, higher CLAs, which are conjugated linoic acids, which are really good for you. And it's good for the environment, the farmer, for you, and for the cow. 10 minutes is up. Wow, I hit that on the nail. So now... Chris just said, any more Costco videos planned, Bobby? Chris? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, we were there today. This Saturday, Summer Costco Hall. Here's, Sunday, right? Uh, Sunday, yeah. This Sunday. Summer Costco Hall. What you need from Costco this summer and what you don't need, hint, you need the keto uh, collagen peptides. You need the grass-fed burgers. You don't need the hydration packets there. And you don't need the uh, coconut water unless you get the right one. I don't want to spoil the video. Art, come down here. Probably don't need anything that I might suggest. <laughs> <laughs> now, this should look about as sexy as chicken skin can. We flip it over. Ooh, Ooh doggy. Bring out the spammers for this. That, that's what I'm talking about. Look at that oh, Here they are, hang on. <laughs> Time out. Okay, that's what you want. I mean, that's the definition of golden brown and delicious, you guys. We put this back on. We set the timer for three minutes, and then just to make sure it's done, I'm going to check the temperature with a probe. So three minutes. So yeah, because, you know what's funny, Chris? I was at Costco um, Monday doing some shopping. I'm like, there's some really cool stuff here for the summer. Told Art, let's do a haul video. So that's gonna come out this weekend with the cheese um, video. What else? Oh, there's a great uh, dressing there now called Odang. It's made from uh, chickpeas. Roasted peppers, extra virgin olive oil, no sugar, perfect for the summertime. Um, we talked about, oh, drinks. Which kombuchas to buy, which ones to avoid, uh, which coconut water is to buy, cold brew coffee, buy it or don't buy it. We talked about sparkling drinks. So everything summer themed is going to be covered. It's going to be an epic, epic haul. Induction doesn't work with aluminum pots and pans. That that I knew. So okay. I just weren't sure about cast iron, so thanks for confirming So that. would it work with this? Because this is aluminum, I believe. That would not work with induction. Oh, that's right. Uh, and then your cast iron, is that a 10 or 12 inch? Uh, the one I'm using now is a 13 inch. Or a 13 inch. Yeah. I always recommend getting a 12 or a 13 because you, you just want to go big when it's that. Or go home. Or go home. Exactly. Um, and that's from Lodge. You go on Amazon. I'm going to put, I'm going to give you the link right now. It's literally a $36, um, cast iron pan. So here, uh, cast iron. Everyone needs to have a cast iron pan in their kitchen. It's just like. It's a must. Is Costco slowly bringing more plant-based grocery choices in? I would say no. Okay. Yeah. I see that Stephanie, no, I wouldn't say that. Also depends where you live. Um, if you live in a more urban environment where more people are plant-based, but I don't really see any more than normal. Um, I don't really see that many in general. Oh, uh, there's this amazing protein bar there in the refrigerator section called, I can't remember what it's called, but we talk about it in the uh, hall. It's the cleanest protein bar I've ever seen. Everything's organic. It was amazing. Do you have a cold brew coffee recipe? Um, I don't, but it literally is eight parts ground coffee to one part cold water. You steep it for about 24 hours and it's done. You could also put flavors in there, like put coconut flakes in there or hazelnut. It infused into the coconut. You know, it's a good recipe. I think uh, Jamie Oliver does. So search Jamie Oliver cold brew coffee and then add stuff like that. So good. Or cocoa nibs. It'd be amazing. Hey, let's check this for seasoning. I mean, it looks super creamy and nice, but it needs to reduce and I have to check for seasoning. I can guarantee you it needs more salt. It needs more salt, but mm. it'd be so funny if you're wrong. And <laughs> enough Sometimes it happens. Sometimes, it, all right guys, we've got 717 people on the live stream. Nice. We're nearing the end-ish. So take the link above my head and share it, baby. Sharing is caring. Put it on your Instagram feed, your Instagram story, your Facebook wall. You say, hey, Flav City is making keto recipes from the new cookbook. Look at Flav and his wife, Desi. Look at Art crushing that photo. You want this book in your life. Okay, so this could be done now. But the only way to know for sure is to take its temperature. We don't want to overcook or undercook our chicken. So I'm going to take my digital probe thermometer, which you could actually leave in the chicken while it's cooking in the oven. And I'm going to plug it in. 
gluten-free phyllo dough. You know where you can find that? Um, you know what? I was just talking to Desi about that yesterday. Do they make that? I've never seen I'm that. not even sure they make that, to be honest. So just put it underneath the skin, right in the middle, and make sure you don't hit a bone. And then, all right, check out the temperature. I want it to be, yeah, see, it's, it's registering high. Don't worry about that. It's not going to overcook. It's thigh meat. You it's got thigh meat. You got a lot you got of a ton. Char Troyer with a $9.99. Super oh, Char. Chef. Char, Thank a you. major super fan from Michigan. She's been a longtime Flav City supporter. We love Char. Thank you so much. So that's done, right? Did you get the thermometer. Th oh, thermometers from Amazon. It's a Polder probe thermometer. They're about as old school as they get. Let me give you the... Uh, Amazon link here again. A smidge of nutmeg in the spinach is amazing, somebody says. You know what? Maybe I'll do that right now. Thank you very much. So probe. Michelle Baker said that. Thank, Thank you, you, Michelle. All these things that I'm pasting here can be found on my Amazon shop page. So Flav City, uh, no, Amazon.com slash shop slash Flav City. You need to have this because it can stay in the oven or on the grill without burning or anything. And it's the best way not to overcook your burgers, steaks, and roasts. Only way. Okay, so I'm gonna take Michelle's advice. I wish you guys can feel this skin. It's amazing. I actually wanna take it out of the pan because I don't want it to keep cooking. Let me wash my... If you had to pick one herb to grow, what would it be? If I had to pick one herb to grow, yeah. hmm, the herb I use the most by far is parsley. and. I've, from what I understand, it actually takes a long time to grow it. We tried to do it a while back, but I use so much of it so quickly. I don't use basil that much. You know what? I choose rosemary. Rosemary is a beautiful bush, and I think the flavor of rosemary is dynamite. So I would choose that in a heartbeat. Okay, look at that skin. Right, give me a little, a little food porn of that skin, please. And then I'm going to get my nutmeg. Over here. Cilantro would be useful. You can cook with it. You can bathe with it. It's so bright. <laughs> That's right. Good one, Art. All right. Nutmeg. Never have the powdered nutmeg. We always grate our own using the microplaner. Is this a nutmeg berry or what's it called, Art? Oh, uh, it's a seed, or is it? I don't, I don't think it's a either. seed. Like, so I'm just gonna do a little bit. Thank you, Michelle. That is a great call. A lot of people forget that nutmeg helps savory flavors in such a big way. A lot of Italian recipes have it. So thank you to that. This is getting really happy, but there's one more thing I can do to this. It's not technically dairy-free when I do this, but I take some Pecorino Romano cheese, which I talked about in the cheese review coming out Saturday. It's a cheaper cousin to Parmesan. It's a sheep's milk cheese from Rome, and I love it. The thing is, even if you're lactose intolerant, you can eat aged cheeses like this because when cheeses are aged, the lactose is eaten away by bacteria. So you're not going to have a problem with this. And to me, it just adds such a lovely, salty, nutty flavor. Can we write the Food Network about you? You need your own show. You know what? Here's the funny thing. I don't know if you know the story, but I tried out for Food Network Star about eight years ago. I made it pretty far and I didn't make it. I was devastated. So I told Desi, let's just start a YouTube channel. The rest is history. So hey, if they want to give me a show now, why not? We'll do it, right? I think they actually have a huge need for a healthy show that actually is good. But we got YouTube. We got the internet. But I agree. I think we've seen enough chopped reruns and Triple D and Beat Bobby Flays that we need a little variety in our life. I think life. they need to rerun a particular episode of Guy's Grocery Games like all the time. <laughs> yes, right. In case you guys Thanks don't know. Thanks for reminding us, Char. Thank you, Char. Yeah, uh, me, Desi, and my brother were on the family edition of Guy's Grocery Games like four or five years ago. We won the show. We beat professional chefs. We won $18,000. It was super fun. Super fun. And I was on Cutthroat Kitchen, which I didn't win, but that was fun dancing around with Elton Brown's mischievous little things there. That was crazy. So Art, while the chicken's hot here, I think we could paint it like Pablo Picasso, right? Oh guys, look, I finally got it. I got the ground beef mixer. I was talking about it on live streams forever. Now I can break up my ground beef. It looks like a mortar. It looks crazy, right? And this side is flexible. It's like a spatula, yeah. but I got it. It's from OXO. I'm super excited to use that. Super excited. Does that go in there? Not a cooking oh. mortar. But... Say again? No, I was just clarifying. Not a cooking mortar, like mortar and pestle, like yes, like yes, mortar. Exactly. Uh, let's paint that chicken, but really quick, Art. Let me get a clean spoon here and just check for seasoning again. 
See, things are looking really good, right? Right now, you don't even know it's dairy-free. It just looks creamy as can be. It just needs to reduce a shade more. I'm gonna guess is it's gonna need more salt, but in the form of cheese. Cheese, glorious cheese. Wowzers, magowzers. That's good. I'm gonna let it reduce. Never it said that. might need a twang more of cheese, but I'll wait. In the meantime, Art, while the chicken's hot here and the pores are open, yes, that is a culinary term, I want Hang on, spammer. to paint my chicken. Spammer, get out. So if I take this, right, I take my Alabama white barbecue sauce. Once again, a mayo-based sauce. Look at this, I paint my chicken. Oh, right, it soaks into that skin without sogging it, really. The smell, can you smell that, Art? It smells good. Oh, when am I gonna get smell la 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 vision Come on, YouTube. Oh my God. Hang on, Spammer. Tangy barbecue sauce and fatty, crispy chicken. Like, that's what dreams are made of, right? So we're in the home stretch here. Let me clean up and we'll do some quality control. And then uh, we'll eat. I was hoping the baby would come so you can, just, you can say hi to her. Is hey, that, baby, is, is that an old paintbrush? Somebody no, that's a pastry brush. Is the, ba is the baby coming or no, babe? No, this is a pastry brush. Look at that. There is a Sherwin-Williams around the block. There is a Sherwin-Williams and a Home Depot. Very, very close. Um, okay. Thank you, Andy P. You are now a moderator. Moderator! It's time for the moderator. <laughs> okay. Hey, babe, bring the baby over here. Just about done. Let me see what plate. I'll use my fancy plate here. Let's chop a little bit of parsley. I was just gonna ask if we could see the baby. <laughs> you gotta see the baby. She's been really, really aggravated the last couple days because she's constipated. She hasn't pooped in like a day and a half now. I don't know what she ate. I mean, my, the food has not been spicy, but she's been an angry little girl, which I don't like, right? What's with the swaying towel? What are they talking about, the one on your belt? This? That's a, to wipe my hands, homie. Let's just chop a little bit of parsley for garnish. Seinfeld, good reference. <laughs> I can hear her crying back there. We got her, we've been trying to massage her stomach and give her bicycles to work out those gas bubbles. Nothing's working, man, it's crazy. Last night was- Somebody, the... somebody thought that was too much information. No, it's a baby, come on. <laughs> That's what somebody said. Yeah, I'm not talking about myself. So let's just chop a little bit of parsley and then let's plate the dish. Oh. What happened? My, my elbow just like went off the edge. Okay, so a couple pieces of chicken down here. Good. Then I'll take my sauce or my spinach here. It could reduce another five minutes, but I can't wait anymore. Put that right there. With the mushrooms, the bacon, onions, and garlic. Absolutely delish. I'm gonna keep it on the flame so it keeps reducing. A little bit of parsley here. A little bit more of my sauce, just like that. And you guys, two recipes from the cookbook. Alabama crispy white barbecue chicken and dairy-free, pretty much dairy-free cream spinach. You give this to anyone, they're gonna mop it up like nobody's business. They're not gonna know it's keto. They're not gonna care it's keto. They're just gonna think it's really, really tasty food and that's all they care about, right? So let me bite into this chicken here. And then Art's gotta try it too and then I'll see if I can grab Rose really quick. So let me turn the oven off too. We don't need any more heat. It's 92 degrees out. Shar, is it pretty hot in Florida or in uh, Michigan? Because it's crazy hot right now in Chicago. So we take this. I mean, look at the chicken art. Juicy as can be. I take a little more sauce. You like it as sauce. I like it as sauce. Hello. That's chicken, you guys. Gone are the days of bland, overcooked chicken, soggy skin. That chicken is like something you might wait in line in a barbecue smokehouse for 
for two hours. It is so juicy. The skin is crispy and flavorful. Hit the like button. Show some love. Ah. Annie is correct. Guys, I want to see hearts flutter across here. I want to see the likes go from 175 to 220 right now. And I want to see you share this video because people need this kind of food in their life. So if you think this is like a one-off, 125 more recipes just like this in the cookbook. There ain't no little silly recipes like for a cheese board, roasted this, how to, uh, what, whatever. No, they're mostly meal prep recipes that are super, super creative, easy and fun to make, but you don't feel like you're dieting. That's the most important part. We even have a whole chapter about vegetables called Mama Told You to Eat Your Veggies. This is not veggies. This is Instant Pot Pulled Pork Sliders those with Red great. Lobster Cheddar Biscuits and Red those, Cabbage Crunch Slaw. Oh, those are amazing. Oh, guys, crazy. But if I go to the chapter about veggies, Mama Said Eat Your Veggies, there's some really, really cool stuff here. There's oh, here. Mama Said Knock You Out. <laughs> Check it out. Crusty Cauliflower Steaks with Insane Green Beans. Those are spice-crusted, reverse-seared cauliflower steaks with a tzatziki kind of sauce and creamy um, blistered uh, green beans. The whole thing actually is vegan if you use vegan uh, yogurt there. Oh, I get Desi chopping some kale there, that cutie. Chopping kale. This is Desi's lemon and spinach uh, like avgo olio soup. This is my lunch kale salad that I eat almost every day. That's um, buttery roasted cauliflower mash for Thanksgiving. Cold Bulgarian yogurt soup. And that's it, you guys. So the Amazon link down is below. So many of you guys have supported the book, but so many more people need this book in their life because they don't know these kind of recipes exist when you're on a diet, okay? It's that simple. JJ Yum. Sama, repeat your question because I missed it. I'll who, see. Who is that? Uh, JJ Sama said, Art, please ask my question to Bobby, but I didn't see the mm. question, so ask it again. I'm do it again. Thank you, Amy. She loves the cookbook. Unlikely Critic says, I'm salivating. Stop. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, signed copies will be soon. Just stay tuned to Flav City Instagram stories. The Trader Joe's coconut milk for me sometimes is solid or it's really runny and chunky. Separated. Is there a way to salvage it because it tastes and looks awful? So Trader Joe's is the best because it's organic and has no fillers or emulsifiers. If that happens, you put it in a pot and just bring it to temperature until it melts and kind of homogenizes back together. Um, if you keep it at room temperature in heat like this, it's fine. The one I opened right now was completely creamy, but when it gets cold, it does that. Totally fine. Just heat it up. Not a problem. Jessica C, not high on anything but life. That's right. That's right. You know it. Uh, let's see here. Thank you, Amy. I appreciate that. How do you, uh, you end up having two thick cutting boards? Because we do a lot of work in here, right? This one is a double thick cherry wood 18 by 24 cutting board and this one is bamboo um the reason why i have two is because we're always chopping and prepping in here art and i are always cooking up something but more importantly look at the real estate here art there's a ton of real estate because you don't want to be chasing things off the cutting board you want to have a big 18 by 24 surface uh flav city uh amazon.com slash shop slash flav city has this in all of my favorite products i have to update that even more um so that's it let me, um, I want Art to try it, and then I want to see if Rose wants to come out. But um, which one should we do first? Here, Art, you try it. Okay. I'm going to hold the camera for you. You stay there. I'll hold uh, the camera. Remember, I'm not wired. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I got you. Sure. I get, well, come with me so I can get a fork. Okay. Fork. Art needs a fork. Hello from Arizona. Yeah, the cutting board's great. You need it. This is better than Food it? Network, says Jessica. I agree completely. Food Network's a little boring these days, Jessica. I don't know. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So Art's going to cut into that. I can hear the baby crying, so I'm not sure it's going to happen, but I'll check for y'all. Wow, Art's happens. getting the perfect piece there. Mm. Isn't that nice? This is good. This yeah. is my first time having white barbecue. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. I like it. I love that. Delicious, folks. Thank you. So oh, it uh, really well together. That's right. It's a good combination, isn't it? And mm -hmm. even though it's not together in the cookbook, you can pair the two recipes because that's what the cookbook's about. In the book, the cream spinach is paired with fennel spiced chicken, right? But because they mix and match so well, I substituted that with the keto barbecue chicken. The pan I used, all right, let's go show the two pans here. All right, tell us about the cast iron pan. This is the 13 inch Thank large you, cast iron skillet. Right. Hefty, but uh, a great value 
by $39. Works, works really well. Right? And this is a 12 inch nonstick pan from Amazon. Aluminum. Yep, aluminum. Up super fast. Yeah, reliable. It's safe, right? It's a safe nonstick coating. Don't use anything sharp. Always use wooden or silicone. I always have at least one of these, usually two, one large one, one small one for eggs. And I probably have about seven cast iron pans because I love them. And you typically don't want to heat these on high heat. With nonstick, you want yes. to go medium high. Yes, yeah, so you never want to go above medium high-ish. Kat says, the book is so worth it. The price has to be, uh, price has to have a photo each. It's a great deal. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right, let me see really quick if Rose Honey wants to make an appearance and then we'll sign off because I have to feed baby mama. So let me check really quick. All right, so uh, the baby? I'll see if there's any questions I can answer while we're waiting for Bobby to come back here. Where's this girl? Oh, Donnie, come out here. We'll show Rose. We've had come burger on. recipes. Yeah, on come here. on. Just check out the uh, come YouTube out with, uh, Donnie. Uh, spammer. Let me put them in a timeout. Can't wait for a second. Everyone, here she is. Oh, come oh, over here. Oh. Let me switch cameras. Rose is here. Almost. Right. Everyone say hi to Donnie. Hey. Come over here, Donnie. She's this away. is Desi's mom from Bulgaria. And she's been a lot of help lately. She's taking care of Rose with us. And this is sweet Rose honey. She's gained, honestly, you guys, like seven ounces since you saw her last. Look at those beautiful chubby cheeks, right? And she's so healthy, eating like a champ. Let's give Rose some likes here. <laughs> That's right. Right? Hi, so, Rose. so Donnie lives in Bulgaria. She's helping out. She'll be here for a while. She's been invaluable. And she loves Rose, and Rose loves her, right, sweet pea? And Rose, yeah, look at these eyes, are. come here. These eyes are just so precious. They're getting bigger and more blue by the day, and her cheeks are getting more chubby by the day. Yeah, is that right? And she's just so darn cute, we love her. And once she gets, you know, that constipation away, she'll be even happier, because we don't want to hear you cry, sweetie, right? She's uh, a month and about one week right now, I was told that come the two month mark, she's gonna sleep through the night. So hopefully, but she's just so darn cute. Mommy and daddy love her so much and grandma loves you too. And that's it, you guys. So awesome time hanging out with you guys. Um, this weekend, once again, Saturday, the Costco Summer Hall. Sunday, the cheese review video, all about the cheeses in the grocery store. Next week, we'll do another live stream. Make sure to get the cookbook. Donnie loves the cookbook. Kakosiva. The boy, uh, can you get that? Huh? Very beautiful. Very, very nice, Donnie says. Um, Amazon link is down below. You guys share this with people who need this in their life. Um, <laughs> in Bulgaria, they have it. They love it. Um, Art and I had a great time. Rose had a great time seeing you because she loves you as much as me. But we will all see you very soon. Until then, hashtag keep on cooking. Mad love from my family to yours. Peace. Are you ready for dinner, sweetie? First, mommy's gonna get some chicken.